Welcome everyone. So uh, my talk will be about uh, sexual reproduction in the green macroalgae Caudium tomentosum as a potential new species for aquaculture production. Um, maybe I should introduce myself. My, my, uh, I'm Gonzalo. I'm work, uh, a researcher at uh, the Faculty of Sciences of Porto University and also at CIMAR. And the results I'm, I'm, I'm giving here are um, from a um, Horizon 20 project called Aquavitae. And yes. So, uh, as uh, Phil before me uh, briefly presented the Aquavitae project, uh, the overall goal of this project is to increase biomass production of low trophic species across the Atlantic, and that's because we, we think. Uh, low trophic species will have a major uh, role to play if you are to increase biomass and food production from the ocean. So basically this work is um, on the development of new species of macroalgae for uh, seaweed aquaculture. That's part of case study one on the Aquavitae project. Um, I'm going to be focusing on one of the tasks here, which is the development of hatchery protocols for Caudium tomentosum. So the, basically the existing, I just need to lower this up. better. Great, so basically the existing pro, uh, um, production or uh, propagation method is based on, uh, on fragmentation. That's a vegetative propagation method. Um, which obviously has some limitations such as limited genetic um, variability and also the lack of e efficient procedures for sitting on two substrates. We are exploring in this uh, task two new different methods. One will be based on sexual reproduction of these species and the other one will be based on a um, micropropagation technique. Uh, the work I'll be uh, presenting today is focused only on the sexual reproduction of the species and uh, basically we've been looking to the effect of season, origin of biomass and different culture conditions on the production parameters such as fertility, uh, gamete release, uh, um, fecundation rate, germ link development and formation of um, spongy talus which is the adult caudium as we know it. Okay, great. So uh, in order to understand this work better I invite you to look into the life cycle of these species. So basically we have um, the, um, yeah, the adult codium here that will form uh, you know, reproductive stru structures on the basis of, uh, on laterally from the otricles, which is this outer layer here. So this um, gametangia will release both male and female uh, gametes. Through fecundation, there will be the formation of a germling, which is like an early stage precursor of adult codium, as we know it, which is macroscopic codium over here. Um, there's lack of information on seasonal variations on the reproductive uh, status of these species, and uh, also there's very limited information on propagation for these species, particularly on sexual reproduction. The overall goal for this work will be to establish the seasonal pattern for, for reproductive status of the species for northern Portugal on two populations, also identify the culture conditions that promote the early stages of development for these species, and also at the later stage define optimized culture conditions that will allow us to establish protocols for the reproduction of these species on, on aquaculture. Okay, so um, for this purpose, we have been doing monthly or bi-monthly sampling in two locations in northern Portugal for almost two years now. Okay, uh, the parameters that we've been evaluating include the species identification, um, identification of sex, uh, gametangia and gametes, size uh, and density, germination rate, and development of these germlings. And I'm not presenting all of these parameters uh, due to time constraints today. We're also interested in inducing the gametogenesis for the species. So when we go out in the field and we have unfertile biomass, how do we 
induce the, the production of our protective stru structures so we can obtain gametes uh, out of it. And for that we have run a, um, a photo period experiment with a long day and short day photo period. As we know this is a primary you know, uh, parameter for, for uh, controlling uh, reproduction in serial species. Okay, we have also looked into the effects of um, light spectrum and intensity on the early stages of development. So after uh, releasing gametes, we have ex exposed those to, um, to different uh, uh, light intensities from 20 to 60 micromole per meter square per second, and also blue, uh, green, red, and white lights. We have also looked into the effect of um, culture media. In this case, we have selected PESH uh, and also some diluted versions of PESH to see how that would affect the growth performance, but also um, contamination development and so on. Okay, so moving on to the results part uh, section. Um, basically, this is the you know, invasive codium fragile species, which we also find here in Portugal, and we are not interested in. And then we have here the native species. And the identification of species is, is morphological through the, you know, this very characteristic uh, tip, um, which is called the mucron, and that basically is present in the codium fragile and is absent in the native species. And for the seaweed that we have collected in these two locations for two years, all of these belong to native species, Codium tomentosum. Okay, uh, looking to the seasonal variation in reproductive status, we can see we have a two year picture already for this, so we can see and the pattern repeats itself over um, for the second year, which is also important looking to these uh, seasonal variations. And we can see that the biomass will be reproductive both most of the year from August to March. And it's unfertile basically for a few months in spring and summertime. And that's the biomass that we have been used to, to induce the gametogens. Okay, and uh, again, by being fertile means that we found the presence of raw protective uh, structures. That's the gametangia over here, growing laterally from the utricle, which is this structure here. Uh, we have uh, obtained both male and female gametangia. They are quite uh, different in terms of size, as you can see. And we have observed also fecundation and formation of these germlings. So here you have already zygote with germination of germinative tube here, which usually happens after three to seven days after gamete release. Okay, looking to the, um, the photoperiod experiment, uh, we can see here, so the long day and short day photoperiod, we see clearly that for the long day photoperiod, we have a higher uh, growth rate and uh, productivity in this case, and we have a, also a higher uh, specific growth rate for the long day photoperiod. If we look into the biomass, we see here for, that for the long for, for the period, you have like new shoots coming out of the old tissue. So it's like new tally actively growing from the old tally, which is this greener part here. While in the short day photo period, it's all green and you don't see these new shoots. And the reason why is because after 70 days, we could actually observe the presence of the reproductive structures in this uh, short day we managed to release gametes, both male and female, and we have obtained germlings. So this is fully reproductive biomass, and that's actually unheard of for, for um, uh, this in induction in the laboratory is unheard of for codium species as far as I know. So looking to the light spectrum and intensity, we see that regardless of the light spectrum applied, you always get better growth performance for the lower light intensity, the 20 micro Einstein compared with 40 and 60, which suggests that 20 micro Einstein is enough to support the growth of these uh, germlings, and likely the higher intensities are already main, making some kind of photo inhibition. Looking to the effect of the culture medium, we can see clearly th that PESH will prom um, promote a better growth than any other uh, mediums or diluted uh, forms of PESH. So that's uh, the one that 
should be preferably be used. However, that will also have a slightly negative impact on development of epiphytes and other contaminations. So it's a, a bit of a trade-off. As long as you work with clean cultures, then patch would for sure be ideal. Looking to the effect of the water movement, um, we can see that uh, actually after three to four days after release of gametes, we have you know put it in orbital shaker, so we could get some shear forces there, and we could compare that of still uh, cultures kept still versus um, orbital shaker. And we can see that actually the effect of water will promote development of these germlings. So you get um, much better growth with water movement. Okay, for most of these uh, um, trials, they have been run for um, four to eight weeks, but we have actually kept these cultures in the lab for much longer time, so we could see uh, if, if in a long, this longer time we could in, induce the um, morphogenesis or development of the adult codium as we know it from these precursors um, germlings. And even after four months in culture, we could not observe this morphogenesis, so we did not obtain this spongy talus. While these germlings keep growing vegetatively, uh, apparently over time, so they just keep growing vegetatively. So it seems like we haven't yet uh, given the right conditions for this morphogenesis to happen. We're giving the right conditions for the vegetative growth of germlings. Okay, so going back again to the reproductive cycle, at this point we control most of the cycle, so induction of gametogenesis, release of gametes, fecundation, development of germling. We have defined optimal uh, culture conditions for the growth of the germlings. We are missing this step on the, on the life cycle, so we are not able at the moment to induce this morphogenesis. So how do we go from germling to adult codium? That's still a question mark there, and that's where we'll be focusing on the next trials. One thing we can guess is that the, 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 the culture conditions here will have to change compared to the ones we have been applying for the germling growth and development. So we can conclude that there's actually seasonal, important seasonal variations in the reproductive status of this species, which will be reproductive most of the year still. We can induce the gametogenesis by applying a short day photo period. We have successfully released gametes um, and, and, and selected the ideal conditions for development of these precursors germlings. They will, if, if, if they will pr um, prefer low light intensities of 20, they will grow equally well in green, red, and white whites, uh, opposed to blue whites. Also, patch compared with the lower concentrations, and also they are promoted, uh, their, their development is promoted by water movement. Uh, again, no differentiation was um, achieved in these studies. No, we, we didn't manage to obtain the adult uh, codium. And, and we, we can estimate, uh, presume that the culture conditions are, that we are applying are good for uh, germling development, but not for um, the morphogenesis induction. That's where we will be focusing in, in the next couple of uh, months. So thank you very much, and I'll have any questions if you have them. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. Uh, very, very interesting uh, talk. Are there questions for us already? Actually, I was struggling a little bit with this. Can you hear me like that per perfectly? Is that yeah, working? Because yeah, I, I didn't have that, so I was trying to go a bit closer, which made me a bit... But you would hear me like this. Okay. Okay. Because I can't hear me like, you know. Yeah, great. Yes, so any questions, please? Yeah, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I have a question and a comment. So are your cultures um, exempt, so bacteria-free? No. Uh, I don't think we want that because right. bacteria have a, a role to play when it comes to morphogenesis in seaweed. Exactly. As, a, as you could see, we are struggling with, with morphogenesis. Yes. Okay. So that was uh, my question. The second question is what, um, what is the interest in codium for our culture? 
Okay, that's uh, an edible species, so it's currently being commercially produced by our industrial partner, Alga Plus. So they are selling it for food and also for um, cosmetics and, and, and stuff. But the, the primary, primarily goal here for the project and, and the main market for this species at the moment is, is food production. So there's a, a, a growing market for that. Uh, there are more questions to Gonzalo. I've heard that they are very, uh, very tasty. From they are actually one of the, the yeah, most yeah. tasty. In fact, in one of the best in which I have yeah. tasted. It's fantastic. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I, I wonder uh, what, in fact, you, you want to, 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 to achieve besides well, science and the understanding mm -hmm. of, the, of the thing. Because Codium, if you break it, it grows, and then you break it, you break it, you break it. What mm -hmm. are you missing when you, as a farmer, do, do like that? Mm -hmm. Why do you need to, to, to have the hatchery? Sure. The so, uh, basically, I mean, if you break it and you're thinking probably about tumble culture, then you'll need to have it in, you know, with the electricity supply with air so you can make it in tumble culture and that's the process that has, has been used already by Alga Plus. They would like to move from the tank culture to the, to the earthen pounds uh, they have which is the uh, you know most of the area in the in their farm so that would increasely uh, increase their their production potential a lot but we need new methods that will uh, allow for um, for um, seeding procedures, so optimized seeding procedures, and, and fragmentation then doesn't, that isn't really feasible for, for our market. So we, we are focusing on these two strategies, reprodu reproduction, uh, sexual reproduction, where you have these germlings that then could be seeded, either seed directly gametes or the germlings into uh, ropes seeded substrates. Or uh, we also following another procedure, which is the micropropagation technique, that can is also has the potential being still a, a also a vegetative uh, reproduction method that has a greater potential for spreading you know these micro units across the the, the substrates so basically that's it we want to move from tumble culture in tanks to rope substrates on on, on earthen pounds okay more questions no more questions thank you very much Gonzalo. yeah